Hello again, apparently you liked part 1, so here is part 2. In the first lesson I showed you how to write a very minimalistic boot sector. In this one we'll talk about bias, and at the end of this video I'll give you a bit of a challenge, you'll have a week to solve. Oh by the way, quick note, before you go why bias, why not UEFI, you're absolutely right. This method is not the most modern one, but I think it's the best for learning. This is a beginner series, mostly focused on teaching assembly, and by making this toy OS I don't mean to make you Linus Torvalds or something, but simply give you an idea of what's going on at the bare metal level. Also, there is a lot of documentation to integrate my videos, and this method does definitely work on modern computers with fancy LEDs and all that. So yes, uh, one day it will be obsolete, but to that day I'll hopefully be still here and I'll update the series. Okay, today we're going to actually make the computer do something. By booting last time, we entered an operating mode called Real Mode. It is a 16-bit mode, assisted by something called BIOS. BIOS stands for Basic Input-Output System, and it is a system that provides us with simple tools we can use to, say, display characters on screen, input characters from the keyboard, read from disk, full list in description. This is where we left last time, an empty everlasting loop. Let's use BIOS to add something. Today's final goal is to print out the alphabet. The first thing we want to learn is how to print characters on screen. Programming in assembly is a bit like pushing buttons, controlling switches and connecting wires. When you move a value from a register to another, you are physically connecting those registers to each other. To enter a particular mode, some register must contain the right value, just like a switch or some machine would have to be in the right position. Same goes with BIOS routines. To print a character on screen, you first need to switch to teletype mode. To do so, we use the AX register. First of all, we want to move, using the move instruction described last time, the hexadecimal number 0E into AH. Then we move the character we want to print to AL. Finally, we want to call something called a BIOS interrupt. An interrupt is a response by the processor to an event that needs attention from the software. Whatever operation the CPU is executing, it will interrupt it and do something else. There are many interrupts that do many different things. The one to print using BIOS is hex10, which we'll call using the INT instruction. If we repeat this seemingly tedious process a few times, we can even print a whole sentence. To test your code, save it and use the commands described in the previous lesson. Let's now have a closer look at a single character. To represent an ASCII character we use single quotes, but it's only one of the many ways we can do it. Let's have a look at an ASCII chart. The letter A is represented by decimal 65, which is hex 4.1, and binary 1000001. If we print these three values, we'll end up with three A's. What if we wanted to say print the alphabet? Yes, we might do that by printing each and every letter, but look, they're all in the right order. We could do something like this. First of all, print the letter A. We could keep the decimal value or just write A like this. Maybe if we keep the decimal value, you will understand better what I mean. If after this we print 66 and then 67, we'll print A, B, C. There is a way to automate this process. After we move 65 into AL, it will stay into AL even after the interrupt. So we can use a command to increment AL. This command is INC. It is equivalent to sum AL1. It simply adds 1 to AL. Just by repeating these two lines, we can print some of the alphabet. But there must be a faster way, right? Like with a loop. Okay, do you see the problem here? It's never going to stop. If we try and run into something very weird will happen. If only there was a way to exit the loop. And of course there is one. Let me introduce you to conditional jumps. In this new program I moved 4 to bx. I want to check if bx is 5. As you may tell, it is not. 
There is an instruction that compares two numbers by calculating their difference, the CMP instruction. These are the possible outcomes of this comparison. And for each of these, there is a conditional jump instruction, a jump instruction that is ignored if its condition is not satisfied. The one we'll use today is JE, jump if equal. This is an example. If the value of the BX register is equal to 5, then this program will jump to the label and print X. If it is not, it will just jump forever and print nothing. Let's try this one out. Since BX is 4 and not 5, it prints nothing. But if I set BX to 5, it will print X. Back to the alphabet. We need to compare AL to Z plus 1 which is the same as writing 90 plus 1. If the content of AL is equal to Z plus 1, instead of printing the value, it should jump to another label, the exit label, where it will jump to the current address indefinitely. And sure enough, here it is, the alphabet. Your challenge for next Sunday is the following. Make a program that outputs the alphabet in alternating caps. Good luck with that! Share your results in the comments. See you next Sunday.